Hey there, my lovely designers! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Divya and I make videos related to fashion design. For those of you who have not seen my videos before, I am a software engineer by profession who has always been very interested in fashion and fashion design, but I'm trying to teach myself fashion design and also documenting the process and the learning journey because I think this can be a safe and relatable space and I think this can also be a very useful resource um, of where to find tutorials or other learning material online. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please hit that subscribe button and come along on my journey. It's going to be awesome and let's get started. Um, I saw this video by Kiana Bonolo. You should definitely check out her channel. She's amazing and she makes videos related to fashion design as well and her videos are very educational. Um, so go check her out. And today I'm going to be following one of her video tutorials. I am very excited about today's video because we are making a tennis skirt. I am excited because of two reasons. The first one is that tennis skirts are so on trend these days and I have wanted one for such a long time and so I'm extremely excited that I'm making one for myself. And then the second reason is that I have never made a skirt before. If you have seen my previous video, you know that I've only ever made tops. And if you have not seen my previous video before, please be sure to check it out because I made a really cute top in that video, which is very quick and easy. That's one of the reasons I'm super excited about today's video because uh, making the skirt is gonna need a few different techniques that I'm not familiar with, that I've never done in my life. Techniques like creating pleats for a skirt, using interfacing, and putting in an invisible zipper. Oh my god, I have heard so many scary things from people about uh, putting in zippers, especially invisible zippers. So I am terrified of that right now, but fingers crossed, I hope it goes well. Here's the fabric that I'm going to be using for the skirt. It's a really pretty white fabric with this glittery kind of silver embroidery work all over it. And when I saw it at, at Joanne's, I was obsessed with it. So I got three yards of this fabric, but I, I'm pretty sure you can make um, at least two, if not three, similar skirts out of um, this fabric. And other things that I got from Joanne's for the skirt was interfacing, matching thread, and an invisible zipper. Let me talk a little bit about what our game plan is. There's no pattern for this skirt because all we really need to cut out is one long rectangular piece of fabric and that's it. Because we're going to cut out that rectangle and then we're going to do the pleats and then basically we're just going to um, sew it into the shape of the skirt. And then we're going to need a, another much smaller and much thinner piece, uh, rectangular piece of fabric to be the waistband. And that's pretty much it. You're going to have to take some measurements like waist circumference, hip circumference. Um, I'm going to start by taking those measurements and doing the calculations to get the dimensions of the rectangle that we need to cut out. So um, Kiana does a great job of explaining the calculations about what you should do and why you should do it in her video. So you should definitely check out her video. She also has um, a template. So if you don't want to think about calculations and why they work, um, you can basically just follow her template. It walks you through all the calculations and everything. Whatever she said in her video about the calculations, it made perfect sense to me. It just personally helps me to think about it in a slightly different way. I'm going to get the same numbers as her in the end, but it just helps me visualize it better if I do it this way. So I start with the waist measurement, right? The, the waist measurement. And um, I divide that with my pleat width. Um, the reason I do this is because when all the pleats are folded up in the final garment that we're going to create, they're going to be 1.5 inches. The, every single pleat is going to be 1.5 inches. And your waist measurement of that final garment is going to be uh, your waist measurement that you just took. So if you divide the waist measurement with your pleat width, you're going to get the number of pleats that are going to be there in your final garment. And then you start with the number of pleats, you multiply that by three, because in order to create one pleat, you have to do three folds of the fabric. So you multiply that by three to get the number of pleat folds. And then you take the number of pleat folds and multiply that with the pleat width, because every single fold is going to be um, the same width as your pleat width. So you multiply that with the pleat width to get 
the final uh, measurement, like the width of the rectangle that we're going to cut out. So this just makes sense in my head. She does a better job of explaining all of this, so please check out her video. Um, and uh, just use her template and follow that to do all the calculations. My rectangle is 86.5 inches wide and 18.5 inches high. So this is the long rectangle that I cut out. It's very, very long. It's 86.5 inches long. And so this is what I have now. The next thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna hem the bottom edge of the skirt um, because what we want is that we want this edge completely hemmed before we start doing the pleats. So I'm gonna hem this. Um, to hem this, I'm gonna fold it twice and then just sew it shut. So we are done with the bottom hem. I honestly, let me take a second to just appreciate how good of a seam this is. Like I'm proud of myself. Um, it turned out pretty well, it's pretty stable. I ironed it very, very nicely and it looks very, very clean and very finished. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that. All right, so now the most important part of this project is to do the pleats. So we are gonna start marking our pleat width, um, like we're gonna make small marks um, along this long edge of the skirt to mark the pleat folds. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and fold them and pin them together. So um, we are gonna start by taking off the half inch seam allowance from both the edges. Um, and then we're gonna start marking the pleat folds do what Kiana did in her video. She basically um, made little snips with her fabric scissors um, wherever she wanted to make a mark. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, so I'm done making these little snips um, for all my pleat folds and these are 1.5 inches wide, which is my pleat width. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start folding these and pinning these together. So this is my um, seam allowance. Um, this is half an inch of seam allowance, so I'm going to leave this alone. And then uh, I'm going to start at this snip. Um, every pleat is going to be made up of three pleat folds. And there's going to be four markings or four snips um, for every pleat. So what you do is that you put alternate snips together. So like this, and then like this. So this is one pleat. And then we keep doing this um, all along the length of this fabric and uh, we'll keep pinning these together. And this is what the pleats are looking like now. Um, so I have pinned all the pleats on the top. I have also pinned them at the bottom, but I'm not 100% sure that they are accurate so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start ironing and I'm gonna pin the bottom as I keep ironing. I ironed all the pleats flat um, I use the maximum heat setting on my iron along with steam because this is a pretty heavy weight fabric and then when you're ironing the pleats, um, you're basically ironing three layers of fabric. So if your fabric is heavy to begin with, um, you're gonna need really high heat. So I'm done ironing all these pleats, but the fabric is, um, and this is what it's looking like right now. So now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna make our pleat adjustment for the hip. So our waist circumference is different from the hip circumference um, at the pleat length. And so we have to make the adjustment for that. So we have to like open up all these pleats 
a little bit at the pleat length so that we can make the adjustment for the hip circumference at that length. For me, um, the difference between the waist circumference and the hip circumference is four inches. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna divide those four inches across these 19 pleats that I have. Um, your pleat number is gonna be different, so you have to divide it across the number of pleats that you have. So I'm gonna divide four by 19, which comes up to 0.21 inches. And so I'm gonna um, mark my pleat length, which is four inches from here. Um, actually, there's a 0.5 inch seam allowance at the top as well. So the, the I'm gonna have to mark at four and a half inches from the top for the pleat length to accommodate that seam allowance. So I'm gonna measure four and a half inches from the top and then I'm gonna make that adjustment to the pleat at that, um, at that height. All right, so I'm done pinning at the pleat length with the adjustment for the hip spread across all of these pleats. So the next thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna sew, um, we're gonna top stitch all of these pleats up until the pleat length. And um, this is gonna be a little bit slanted, like all the pleat um, seams are gonna be a little bit slanted um, to accommodate the hip circumference and the hip adjustment. I have sewn down all the pleats with a top stitch um, along with the hip adjustment and this is where we're at right now honestly I'm pretty happy with this because this is starting to look like a skirt um, and it, I'm actually hopeful that it's gonna turn out okay so this is where we're at uh, the next thing to do now is to do the waistband and attach the waistband um, and then we'll do the invisible zipper and close down the side seam. So I have cut out the waistband from the fabric. Um, mine is 29.5 uh, inches long and three inches wide. And then I have also cut out a similar strip of interfacing. So the, the bumpy side or the rough side is the one that has the adhesive. And so the bumpy side should be put in contact with the wrong side of the fabric. And this is how we are gonna fuse it against the fabric. Okay, so I um, iron on the interfacing onto the fabric and here's my waistband now all fused together with the interfacing um, It does feel a little bit stiffer now. So this is what it looks like and now the next step is to um, pin this to um, the top edge of the skirt right sides together and Then we're gonna sew along this um, edge and attach the bottom edge of the waistband to the top edge of the skirt So I'm gonna do that So here is the bottom edge of the waistband connected to the top edge of uh, the skirt. So now we are going to iron fold this upwards and iron the seam so that this holds in place. Okay, so unfortunately uh, my camera battery died so I wasn't able to um, record the part where I sewed the invisible zipper in. I was so stressed out about this, um, but it was actually okay. I don't have an invisible zipper foot, so I used the regular foot and it turned out really well. Um, if it's your first time sewing an invisible zipper, I'd suggest looking up some uh, YouTube videos that show you how to do that. But other than that, I, I think it was, it was pretty cool. And then I closed the back seam as well. So now there's only one thing left to do, and that is to close down this um, this um, waistband. And so before that, we're gonna sew um, these edges shut as well, and then we're gonna um, put down this um, waistband and then um, sew all around the waistband, and then that would be it, and we'll be done. I am so excited. I think this is gonna turn out well. Okay, so let me do these final things and um, come back. Thank you. 
Okay, so here's the skirt all complete. Um, the zipper is in, the hem is done, and then um, the waistband is so shut as well. So let me go try this on and show you all how it looks. Out. This was such a fun project to do and I'm so happy with how the skirt turned out. I was honestly a little scared before starting this project because there were so many new things involved and that made me nervous. But I'm super happy to report that I am well past my fear of invisible zippers now because I think I did a pretty solid job putting in the zipper on the skirt. It's not super invisible right now but I'm not mad at it. I didn't have an invisible zipper foot so I ended up using the normal foot but I think a zipper foot would have helped. So if you have that, please um, use it because I think it's going to make a difference. Other than that, the, when you make the pleat, please take your time to thoroughly iron out every single pleat because it makes a big difference in the end and how your garment looks in the end. And I would definitely, definitely recommend you try this out because this is one of those projects that will make you feel like you did something and it, it will make you feel good about your skills and you will get a really pretty skirt in the end so i'm pretty happy with it let me know what you all think let me know uh if you like this skirt and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and uh please subscribe and join me on my journey i'll see you in the next one bye